Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be checking out the 2015 Scion FRS. This is a two-door coupe with four seats and this is of course very similar to the BRZ which I reviewed. I'll include a link to that in the video description as this was a joint project between Toyota and Subaru. Fog lights up front. This vehicle has a coefficient of drag of 0.27 which is actually slightly better than the Subaru unless you're referring to the series blue. MSRP starts around 26,000. As tested this comes to 30,438. Checking out the trunk, you can open it with the key fob. Not all that large, but you can fold down the rear seats. So checking out the engine bay, this is of course the exact same as the BRZ, so I'm just gonna kind of skim over it. But what we have is a 2.0 liter boxer four cylinder, and this is aluminum block and heads. It produces 200 horsepower, 151 pound feet of torque. And some of the things I like about the engine bay, they've got the battery on the passenger side uh, and all the way back, and it's still accessible. So great from a weight distribution standpoint. You've got these strut braces for a little bit of added rigidity. You've got your air filter with some quick clips and your fuse box also has quick clips. You've got your oil filter right up on top with your oil fill, uh, your brake fluid and your windshield washer fluid. So everything in here is pretty accessible, uh, except of course the spark plugs, which are down to the sides. But other than that, you know, you've got your alternator right up on top uh, and no, you know, bulky engine covers. So a pretty good layout in here. I like it overall. And the engine's kind of pushed down real low to keep the center of gravity of this vehicle really low, which it is. So great design overall of this engine bay. Now, the one difference this one has is it has the TRD air filter in it. Not the uh, air intake kit, but the air filter. So really easy access to get to it. Uh, and there you can see the filter, which is reusable. You can just simply clean it out and then replace it, put it right back in. The exhaust collects into a single pipe, which passes to the rear. This is the optional TRD exhaust, and it is slightly larger than the stock exhaust, a few millimeters. Engine power is sent from the six-speed automatic transmission, which is mounted up front. There is, of course, an optional manual transmission to a rear limited slip differential. This is a Torsen-type limited slip differential, where it then distributes the power between the two rear wheels. 17-inch alloy wheels wrapped in Michelin 215 over 45 R17 tires. These are the same tires that are on the BRZ, but these wheels do weigh about three pounds more than the Series Blue, which I tested. Up front, 11.6 inch ventilated disc brakes. This is matched with a McPherson strut style suspension. You can see the steering linkage coming in here and the anti-roll bar. And this anti-roll bar is part of the TRD sway bar kit. So these are actually 2.6 millimeters larger in diameter than the stock sway bars. And they also include polyurethane bushings. Double wishbone suspension in the rear, 11.4 inch ventilated disc brakes. You also do have the TRD sway bar in the rear as well. So this comes with the polyurethane bushings and these are 15.8 millimeters versus the stock 14 millimeter diameter. So let's have a look at the interior. You do have keyless entry with this key fob so you can unlock it with that. Cloth bucket seats, well bolstered and mechanically adjustable. Okay, so checking out the interior, the cloth seats are pretty soft as far as the cloth material and they're also pretty well cushioned, so pretty comfortable seats, really well bolstered, so you know if you are a bit wider, uh, these actually touch both of my sides and I'm a pretty narrow guy, so you know they're really well bolstered for me, if you're on the skinnier side you're probably going to really like these seats, um, so I do like them. The steering wheel, pretty straightforward, simple leather wrap, no buttons on it, but you do have these paddle shifters which are mounted with it, and then your cruise control uh, functionality here on the right. Automatic power windows, electronically adjustable mirrors. You can select through a few of the things, and I think this uh, display cluster here is a little bit nicer than the one that was in the Subaru. Just looks a little bit nicer, though if you have the lights off, it's pretty difficult to read the speedometer one. Um, now, so going in here, you, you do have a digital speedometer. Uh, you also have the outside temperature, your average fuel economy, uh, and an instantaneous fuel economy. So a few functions there. And then moving on to the infotainment system here, pretty basic, uh, but it does, you know, the basic things that you need. You've got navigation, you can connect your phone to it. Um, and one interesting thing, I guess, if you're not really satisfied with the fact that you bought the FRS, you know, you can change over and you say, well, I wish I had the XD, and then you can punch that in. So I'm not sure exactly why that's there. Um, you know, who wants a Scion IQ uh, over this? But, you know, it, it's there if you want the option. Now, looking at the climate control settings here, really basic and kind of cheap, honestly, as far as how it feels. But that said, I like how simple it is. You know, I, I prefer this over a lot of the systems out there. You choose where you want the air blowing, you choose how hard you want it blowing, and you choose what temperature you want it to be. Uh, very simple, very straightforward, though it is a bit cheap to the touch. 
You've got your gear selector here, uh, and you can switch it over into the manual mode. You can turn off your traction control if you press and hold this, uh, and then you can put it in sport mode. So if you put it in this VSE sport, it allows you to get a little bit sideways, but not too crazy, so that you can kind of control it and it's not that terrifying. Uh, and then if you just want to have crazy fun or go out on a track and slide all over the place, you can just disable this, and it'll allow you to do whatever you want. So you have a sport mode here as well with the automatic transmission and a snow mode. So what the sport mode does is it keeps you in lower gears and it allows you to rev higher in those gears. Uh, and also in the snow mode, uh, what that does is it prevents you from getting into first gear. So if you're in a condition where wheel slip would be common, you don't want to be in first gears. You've got too much torque, so it puts you in second from a start. Now, as far as storage, you've got a little space here on the left. You've got a space up here, which actually fits a phone really well, so I do like that. Uh, you've got a little Bluetooth connectivity and auxiliary input, and you have a 12-volt outlet here. Now, the one thing with this is you have this armrest, which can slide in between here, and so it covers one of the cup holders, uh, unless you put the cup holders up front, but if you do that, then you block the power outlet, so you're kind of always making a sacrifice uh, with this armrest, and if the armrest is all the way back here, you know, it's not actually doing what it's supposed to, so if you, you are using the armrest, it'll be up here, and then you've got one cup holder rather than two, and you're also kind of blocking this, so, you know, the functionality of it is kind of just like a compromise of everything, just because you kind of have limited space, so it works works. Um, I'm not that thrilled with it, and I, and I wish there was something that would kind of attach this down. Enough ranting about that. Let's move on to visibility. Looking out the front is pretty good, and to the sides isn't too bad. I mean, it is a little bit narrow all the way around, but, you know, it's not too bad. This is a pretty small vehicle. Checking the rear, not terrible visibility out the back, and then looking at your blind spot, it's pretty much jumbled up here, so you're going to have to lean forward a little bit, check your blind spot, and make sure you have your mirrors adjusted properly so that you can see out the rear. Now, someone commented on my BRZ video that they actually can fit smaller people in here, so I thought, okay, maybe I'll try it out, see if I can sit on the passenger side rather than behind the driver's seat where I have it. And the problem that I found is that down here, you can't pull the seat back very far because it doesn't have much clearance underneath for your feet. So no matter what, I mean, you pretty much just can't fit someone back here unless you have maybe your feet sideways, and then you can pull it back a little bit more but then it's like, are you really going to sit back here and ride like this? So it's, it's pretty cramped. Um, you know, maybe if you're about five feet, then it might work back here to have this pretty much all the way forward and someone else back here. But in reality, these seats really aren't that useful. Okay, let's go for a test drive. Now, in my BRZ review, I went into pretty good detail explaining the different systems. The steering's phenomenal, uh, you know, tight ratio, and it's really responsive. The pedal feel is great, you know, not much travel in the brake, really aggressive, but it feels really good when you're driving, uh, you know, kind of at the limit. And, you know, everything about the driving experience was really good, and that was in the manual transmission. Now, this is the automatic transmission, and I think I was spoiled a little bit driving the manual first, uh, because it just makes me dislike this a little bit more than I think I would have had I driven this first. The automatic is okay. Uh, it doesn't quite make this car what it really is. It doesn't let it shine the way it does in the manual transmission. And so you do have the ability to select, you know, manually. When you're driving with it in automatic, the gear shifts feel fine. They're smooth, uh, they seem quick, uh, no issues with it. When you do put it over into manual mode, and I'm going to put it in sport as well so the tail can get a little bit sideways. Uh, when you do put it in manual mode, the gear shifts just, I mean, it's an automatic gearbox, and it acts like most automatic gearboxes that I've tested. Honestly, and I know this opinion probably isn't going to be well received, but I think they would have been better off putting a CVT in this for the automatic version than this uh, automatic with planetary gears and the torque converter. I mean, it's just not that quick. And when you are, there are certain scenarios when you're driving it and it's just kind of jolty, um, it's not that smooth. And so for the most part, it is smooth, especially in automatic, but when you put it into the manual mode and you do the gear shifts yourself, uh, it just takes a little bit of time to do it. And, you know, up shifting's actually pretty good. I would say that's probably the highlight of it. You know, if you're if you're out flat out and you're accelerating and you're up shifting, it does it pretty well. Down shifting is a little more rough uh, and not quite as quick. You know, you press it, you wait a little bit, and then it happens. This does have the TRD exhaust, which does sound a little bit more aggressive than the BRZ, so I will say that it does sound a little bit better than the BRZ that I tested. Um, I just think it's unfortunate that 
you know, this automatic transmission just kind of doesn't let this car shine. So it is really fun to drive. Don't get me wrong. Um, it's a it's a great car. It just doesn't have quite the acceleration of the manual. It's not as fun to shift. And also, you, it, it feels like it's a little bit harder to get the tail out in this. And the BRZ actually has uh, softer front springs and stiffer rear springs. Uh, the FRS does rather than the BRZ and so it should be easier for this to get a little bit tail happy but I think because of the automatic gearbox it weighs a little bit more um, and it just doesn't quite have the ability to get that tail out just as easily as I was uh, with the BRZ that I was testing. It just seemed to be really easy to just put your foot down and power oversteer. Here's a good corner where I can demonstrate that. So we get a little bit of wheel slip in there see if I can turn that completely off. There we go. So you can do it. I mean, it's certainly capable of, you know, kicking the rear tires out. It's just a little bit more challenging, I think, with the automatic. I think the, the FRS probably can do it really well because it does have a little bit stiffer springs back there. Uh, you know, it does have the same tires as the BRZ. Uh, but that said, I think it's this automatic gearbox that's kind of limiting it a little bit as far as getting the power down. It doesn't feel quite as quick uh, and it doesn't feel quite as easy to get that rear to kick out. It's still very possible. So don't let me like make you think it's impossible to do it. Uh, it's just with the manual transmission, it was a little bit easier to do so. The other things are pretty obvious. I mean, the manual is a little bit lighter and it costs like a thousand dollars less. Um, I did get slightly better fuel economy in this with the automatic transmission. So there is that benefit, uh, which most drivers would probably see a little bit better fuel economy with the automatic than the manual and that's due to gearing the manual is geared a little bit more aggressively in all six gears so you know you get a little bit more torque in all six gears and the automatic you get a little bit less but better fuel economy um, and it's a very comfortable car it's a very fun car if you don't want to you know take the time to learn how to drive a manual or you feel like you don't want to be burned by it in traffic like understandable uh, and it's a fun car to have it's just not quite as special as the BRZ that I drove that had that manual transmission and now that I've ranted about the transmission for the entirety of this review, uh, let me just go back and say that I think the steering in this car is phenomenal. One of the best steering feels I've felt in a modern car, and I just really love the way that, you know, it's really responsive and it has a short ratio, so it feels really good as you're going through the corners. You also do get a great amount of feedback from it, uh, which is quite nice because most cars these days, you know, especially with the electronic uh, steering, you just don't get the feedback anymore. And this one, you can really kind of feel what that front end is doing. And so I do appreciate that. Now, one thing worth mentioning is that this does have the TRD sway bar kit. And I didn't really notice any body roll with the smaller anti-roll bars in the BRZ that I tested, uh, but this has even less, you know, it's pretty stiff, rides really flat. And so, you know, through the corners, this thing stays incredibly flat, uh, thanks to slightly beefier anti-roll bars. And so, you know, I wouldn't say it's necessarily needed, uh, but it doesn't, I also don't think it really hurts the ride quality at all. I haven't really noticed this being all that much stiffer than the BRZ that I tested. So overall, you know, if that's an option that you want, you want it to be slightly more flat in the corners, I think it is something, you know, that could be worthwhile. The other thing that you can get with the FRS versus the BRZ as far as dealer installed options is you can get the air intake kit, uh, the air filter. They've got a decent number of aftermarket uh, parts with the FRS, which you can have installed at the dealer, uh, which I don't think you have with the Subaru. Of course, you could just take the Subaru and install the same parts since they're essentially the same car. Um, I don't see any reason why you couldn't do that. And the Subaru does also have a little bit more convenient features to it. You know, it's got the push button start. Um, it had the handles, which you could open with your hand rather than using the key fob. So I thought that was nice uh, as far as unlocking it and locking it. Just some little uh, creature comforts. I think the interior of the BRZ uh, was slightly nicer, um, but this one does start a little bit cheaper and it does weigh very slightly less than it. I mean, it's within like 15 pounds, so nothing major, um, but a slight weight difference. And overall, you know, pretty, pretty comparable vehicles. This one just has slightly stiffer rear, slightly softer front, um, and then the option to, you know, upgrade the sway bars and some things like that. Okay, so we're gonna get a quick highway pull in here. I've got the traction control off. I've got it in sport and manual gear selection mode. So we're gonna come over here, straighten out, come to a stop, build the revs a little bit. 
power off. And there's 60. So driving on the highway, I've got the cruise control set at 65. You do hear a decent amount of tire noise as well as some wind noise. So it's among, you know, the more uh, noisy cabins of the vehicles which I've tested out. You're looking at about 81, 82 decibels, which was the exact same as the BRZ which I tested. Kind of a sacrifice that you get when you get a really lightweight vehicle. You know, you got to take out some of that sound deadening material and things like that. So I've completed my fuel economy test course. This is approximately 53 miles, primarily highway with some city and some hills mixed in. This car is rated 25 in the city, 34 on the highway. And as you can see, it achieved 40.6 miles per gallon overall. So really good fuel economy out of this. And this is the automatic versus the manual BRZ, which I tested, which got 38.1. So this car is rated about three miles per gallon better overall than the manual and it achieved 2.5 miles per gallon better overall in my test course. What's really great about this car is just how easy it is to kind of just flirt with the limit. You know, you can you can bring it right up to the limit and you can keep it there or you can just kind of slightly cross it and just let the tail start to slide out. It's just a really easy car to just bring to its limit and kind of leave it there and you can approach that quickly or you can approach it slowly uh, and you can kind of stay just below the limit uh, really easily. So it's, it's a really easy car to just kind of go out and thrash. It's just really well balanced uh, and so when you are in a cornering situation where the rear end starts to kick out it's very easy for you to just compensate using the steering to just keep that in the direction that you want it to go and so just overall the balance of the car is just really well sorted out and I just really enjoy driving it because of that it's just so much fun through these corners because you just have so much control and it's very predictable as far as how it handles so thank you for watching if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them below